All right, everybody. My next guest is a very funny guy who has been on HBO's Crashing and Showtime's White Boys in the Hood and all over Sirius XM Radio. And his brand new comedy album, the Zoom album 2020, is out now. Here he is, the comedy cowboy himself, Dustin Chafin. <laughs> How up, are you? Buddy? How's it comedy going? Cowboy. I can't yes. let that one go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You'll Wait, always once you get you know, a nickname, I think it always sticks with you, right? Ah, once you wear one cowboy hat, it's for life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even changing my hats up a little. They still call me cowboy. Nice, yeah. Because you're originally from Texas, right? So you're I always- am. It'd be weird if I was from Queens, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was born and raised in Texas, so I p- technically have a pass to wear the cowboy hat. So yeah, there you go. So and then you, you've been in New York is kind of your stomping grounds. This is where you kind of yeah. Earned, earned I've been in New York bones. almost almost longer than Texas. I've been here a long time, over 20 years. So you know, yeah. I'm technically a New Yorker. I think very at this cool. Point. Very cool. Is, is Texas where you came to, to uh, kind of cut your teeth in, in comedy? Uh, yeah, well, I started in New York. I uh, originally I went to art school in Manhattan, and then I was a busboy at the New York Comedy Club. Oh, and nice. I started cooking and cleaning and for stage time, that kind of thing. Well, I kind of fell in love with it while I was working there and stuff. And I was and like, then, I got to do this. This is way cooler than, you know, just being like a painter, you know. <laughs> or being it was way better than being a busboy, too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was a good gig, though. I was happy. I'm one yeah. of those people, uh, you know, I got stage time. I got to eat, you know, in the kitchen. But uh, that was the time they had a full kitchen in the New York Comedy Club. It was crazy. Is is New York Comedy Club your your main club now? Or do, No, you- that was I mean, that's where I started. Yeah, that was the first place I ever did stand up in New York City. Um, I, I did like a talent show in Utah. Like it's a whole thing. I was a Mormon. I have a weird, a weird backstory, but, uh, but new, uh, <laughs> New York comedy club was the first place I did comedy. And, uh, then I just, uh, was a manager and worked with Al Martin. And then, oh nice, and, I, yeah. and then I kind of started running clubs around the city. I, uh, you know, my whole thing is I, I hated open mics. So I felt like I couldn't get any like traction with my material. So I was one of those guys. I just, I would run a show anywhere. And so I ran shows all over the city. I ran shows at Gotham when it first started, Sam, New York, you know, different at Boston comedy club. I ended up kind of running that place for a couple of years. And wow, I nice. was kind of that guy. I just, I had bar shows everywhere. I just ran tons of shows because I just wanted to get up. Like I didn't want somebody to have to pick me or whatever. So I just kind of started running shows. So they're, I feel like all the clubs are my clubs. I, lo- I love that. You kind of <laughs> made your own path. You're like, you know what? Yeah. I don't want to go this way. I'm going to be that guy instead of having to wait, be, rely on that guy. Absolutely. And I'm a choke artist. Like whenever I have to audition, I always have a shitty set. So I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to like just do my own on my own stuff. And eventually I'll get I'd get good enough that I could just pass a club. But it was like, you know, I just kind of just did my thing. Yeah, that's the way you do it that's awesome that's how you you, you kind of worked your way up in, through the craft and and uh that was f- from 96 and here we are now yeah and zoom land and, and we're in, in the era <laughs> of, <laughs> of zoom comedy you know it's a lot of people you know they shit on it but uh i i enjoy the commute you know it's uh i literally came from the kitchen so <laughs> <laughs> that's the best that's the best way to look i love the commute it really is. yeah and if you and if you bomb you just close your flat top or your laptop and then just go watch some netflix like you don't have to sit on the subway or the train in long island and yeah horrible like just like sitting with your thoughts and all that you know <laughs> that's great because you know there is so like such mixed feelings about zoom like when i i interview comedians yeah. all the time and you, you, you most of them are always like oh god this zoom is so hard i don't like it yeah. it's uncomfortable and and then there's other people that that like it and then there's other people that thrive on it and and only one guy I know that's done what you did, and that's you. Um, you know, built an, an album of, of uh, your like a Zoom record, which I think is yeah. it's awesome. And be, because it, for many reasons, one, the comedy's great on it, and all that. But I, I love also that it's kind of a sign of the times. Like it's kind of like, um, you know, something that we could look back on in 10 years or 20 years or whatever, and go, oh yeah, that's the Zoom era when they, everyone was quarantined. Yeah, man, it's kind of, I was, you know, I kind of wanted to make a little history, do something that, you know, a lot of people weren't doing. And, you know, when the whole thing happened, it's like, I was just like everybody else. I was like, what the hell are we going to do? You know, it's like, there's no clubs. And, you know, it's like, in some places we're doing comedy, like on the road, you know, you could get a few gigs here and there. And I did get a few, you know, it's certain states that don't really care about their people. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> like Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut, Ohio, yeah. you know, Arizona. They don't yeah. give a shit. It's like, ah, care. whatever. <laughs> Let's do a comedy show. We don't yeah. care. So, but I'm I'm really a city guy by heart. So I, you know, a lot of my city stuff dried up, and and so. You know, I started doing some of these Zoom shows, getting just, you know, I remember I did one for a, a club in Long Island. It wasn't Governors or anything. It was like a bar that did comedy, one of those Mike Dillon gigs or something. Right, right, right. It was like an Instagram thing. And it was horrible because it was like Instagram is, I'll never do an Instagram show ever again because they, they, they comment the whole time and you just see them like you're just getting heckled by emojis and stuff. <laughs> It's like, that's crazy like saying crap and you're like what and you don't have time to respond because you're trying to do your act so right. that, my, that was my first thing was that and then i started doing some of these zoom shows and uh ryan DeCallis and some of these people kind of reached out to me and you know i started kind of getting my rhythm i started figuring it out and it's like i started realizing that it's more about kind of having an upbeat attitude like because because if you're all negative about it, it's just going to suck. But if you're just like, hey, at least we're doing comedy. And the people are excited because they just want some normalcy. They want a comic messing with them and having fun. And that's kind of what I, you know, just kind of the, the frame of mind I got into was have fun with it. And uh, I learned how to do crowd work with a little box. You know, you make fun of people's, you know, backdrop. Hey, the shark you got on the wall. And like, yeah. you just make fun, of, make fun of the book. So who's reading Dr. Phil? You know, just, you know, whatever you can play with, you figure it out. It's adapting to this weird environment. And uh, I got pretty good at it. And then I was just saying, and then, and the whole thing was too, the bar was so low that I just wrote all the time. Like I wasn't going to do a stuff on a zoom with comics that have seen me before. Right, you know, right, I didn't want right. to be that guy that's like, here's my closer, you know. So yeah, yeah. I just did all new stuff. And so every time I would may say I would do three shows a week, I'd do a new set every time. You know, after a couple of months, I realized, you know what, I kind of got a whole new act. And so I kind of just, you know, just started messing around with the idea of maybe recording something. I, I think it's awesome. I think I, I love that you you embraced it. And like you said, when you go on these Zoom shows, you, you do see some comics that are, they don't necessarily take it very seriously. And then there's others that like, that, um, are, you know, feel like they got better things to do. But, yeah. but I think for an audience, we want to see enthusiasm. We want to see you enjoying it and having fun with it and know that we're all in, in this crazy time together and, and all that and, and so I mean, look at look at the news you know what i mean like it, like the view is like this same quality or whatever yeah, right. like all, these, all these high-end shows so so you can't get weird about it you just got to go with it they did i mean look i mean i think Col colbert is still like this you know so <laughs> there's high-end right. guys that are still <laughs> doing this trevor noah is still in his house like yeah. you know so it's like you just have to kind of go with, you know, like you said, go with the times and have fun. And there, you know, there's definitely it is about attitude, I think. Yeah. And I, I think w w your stuff is great, man. I like I listen to the record. I love it. Um, your album. And then, you know, um, you, uh, when you see a comedian that's um, that needs help with because with, there's got to be two different styles. There's the stage and then there's Zoom. OK. Walk me through the differences preparing for a stage set like old old school versus this kind of Zoom style. Yeah, I mean, my first album, it was all about just, you know, kind of accumulating all my material from years of doing comedy at, at you know, firehouses and elk lodges and like you know, all these, like <laughs> having to follow a raffle and do stand up comedy. You know what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, it's, yeah I, you know, so it's like a lot of that stuff. So you get prepared, but you, but you have your chops are up. So you're just, no matter what, you're kind of always ready for an album because you're performing all the time. Right, but right. this was a totally different thing because you're not performing and so you're just only doing zooms and things like that and so um i think the the whole thing with me was just uh i took more risk on this album than i did on the first album because the first album i'm kind of like a machine gun comic i'm just punchline punchline and then this one i just took some risks with some stories you know um a comic once said to me that um you know vic henley who passed and was sad um, god bless him yeah yeah he was a great guy but he said something that kind of was shitty but it was something I needed to hear. He said, you know, <laughs> you're more interesting than your act. And I was like, damn, you, nobody wants to hear that. Right. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> but he was right. Like there was so much stuff I was setting on that I wasn't sharing on stage. 
And so it was kind of one of those things where I was like, you know what? I'm I'm going to just take a risk here. It's a Zoom show. Who gives a shit? If I don't like it, I can just hit delete. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend the whole thing didn't happen. <laughs> you know so right. i just uh i did some you know you heard it some material about kind of what's happening and just traditional jokes and then i kind of um sat back and told some stories about my family and craziness that i went through as a kid and so i just kind of uh trusted that the audience was going to be cool and it was uh, i got a lot of support from you know people online that you know instagram friends and fans and and then so a lot of comics stepped up. You know, that's the thing is I usually say, hey, I hate comics. You know, I hate everything about them. But then they show up when you need them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they support your dumb podcast. They support your dumb shows. And it's, like, <laughs> it's like, I want to hate all of you, but didn't you show up? So there was a lot of love from comics and stuff. So being that I knew it was going to be comics and stuff that knew me, I wanted to share stories they'd never heard and things like that. And so I just kind of like took the approach like that, just kind of, you know, just taking risks with stories and whatnot and just, you know, the, just the stories are great. Uh, uh, you know, I, lo I love the, the, the rapid style that you do too, because it's, it's very clever, just the, the one, two punches, but your stories are great. Like the one with you in the, in the room full of clowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being down there and just bombing in front of clowns. I still have nightmares waking up of sounds of horns and pitter patter of large <laughs> clown shoes just trampling over my body. Uh, the, the greasy pig and, and uh, all those kind of stories that you yes. tell are, are just classics. <laughs> you don't know what a greasy pig contest is. Uh, you might not because you can read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is where they take a pig and they put Crisco cooking oil on it. And then they shoot it into a rodeo pen. And then all these little redneck kids try to catch the pig. <laughs> and uh it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in life it's slipping through the legs and arms and it can't get it and the winner the winner gets a ged i think that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm glad vic had that conversation with you and got you to tell some stories yeah man it was fun and uh, another thing that's great about zoom is you could just look at a cheat sheet the whole time and so i <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows what's on the left of your screen so, <laughs> so that's what they got i mean because a lot of this shit i like i said i hadn't performed in clubs so i had i wrote a lot of it the like, kind of that week and right. some of it some of it that day because i needed to piece it all together so i did a whole bunch of poster boards everywhere and you know that kind of thing and i and i recorded it and my uh my girl my fiance she, her parents are potters in maine and so i recorded it in this uh, pottery pottery studio in the middle of maine wow so, so it was like this big huge space and so i had this you know all this space to work with and stuff and i had mannequin heads which was just it was so funny because i felt like you know you can kind of see it on the album cover i i had these weird mannequin heads I, my girl's mom she like you know she's like a yard sale person or whatever anyway she has like mannequin heads everywhere and it's terrifying like you just you walk around a corner and there's like a mannequin head and I'm looking at you and like it's just terrifying. And so, yeah. so, so I said, I'm just going to use some of these, you know, and kind of tongue in cheek and be silly. And so but it really helped because it was like the hardest part is you just, you know, this the fact that you see a keyboard and you don't see people. And so I put these mannequin heads up and it was funny how comfortable it made me. And I sat on a stool, like I was at governor's and I'm like, Hey, what's up? You know, just, yeah. <laughs> I'm making, I'm making fun of these mannequin heads, like playing around, like, and, the, and it was like, psychologically, I just felt like it was a set and it was right, like right. all the little details that I did to kind of be silly and make it feel like a, whatever it, it worked. And so then I just kind of just got up there and just, you know, did the time and, you know, and it, it was like comfortable. And that's all one Zoom performance is the album, right? It's not like a, a stitched together from different. No, uh, it's just, it, well, it was two shows. It was like most people do two right, shows. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So I did a, I did like a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock. And uh, yeah, and we recorded both sets and, uh, you know, kind of, I have a, a sound engineer, a comedian that I work with, Anthony Capper who's a great comedian and a really good sound guy. Like he's a musician. And so he, he helped produce my first album. And then I just kind of really wanted him for this. Cause he knows the kind of sound I went in. The hardest part was, cause my whole goal was like, I got to get it on Sirius XM. That's the only way I'm going to make money. I'm not going right, to make that right. much money on Amazon or iTunes. Right, right. You tap out, people buy it and they stop buying it. But I knew if I got it on Sirius in rotation, I could make money. So, but the only thing was it had to sound good enough 
you know, it could still sound like a zoom album, but it had to sound, you know, like you could hear the laughs and I had to be clear. And so we had to do a lot of work to make it sound good. So, cause you know, sometimes it's like people laugh, they sound like they're laughing like Darth Vader, you know, they got this distorted. Right. Of, like through the, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound right. right. So we kind of had to tweak and do some like, you know, whistles and bells to make it sound good. But, but I felt like I was really happy with the end result and uh, it sounds like just an album, you know? Yeah, it's it's great. I love how it starts out with you kind of uh, kind of fumbling a little bit with Zoom, like you can't see yourself, and you know you kind of like setting it up and saying things that we've yeah. all felt like yeah. in the beginning of this. And I don't, I didn't know much about Zoom. I don't think anybody, I didn't even know it existed, and and um, so it's uh, discovering it like we all had to. So I, I like that right out of the gate. You, you you know what's going on. All right. Okay. Now, why can I see myself? This is weird. Okay. Oh, because the video's not on. There we go. There's Anthony. Hey, what's up, Anthony? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I think your mute is on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Is this better? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's way better. Okay. <laughs> that's how you tell how old we are, is how long it takes us to get on Zoom. <laughs> it's a fun album. It, it goes relatively fast. I mean, just kind of how long is it maybe 30 minutes uh, it's about 45 minutes 45 minutes yeah. yeah it was an it was an hour and change but i wanted it to be tight so we kind of narrowed it down to like this really tight thing because i'm a tight comic by nature even even with stories and stuff i got it so i didn't want it to draw out because that's the thing is like you know you lose attention with with zooms audiences like you really gotta you gotta work hard to keep their attention because they got their phone in their hand they're watching tv on another eye like you know right yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) they're jerking off you don't know what they're doing so it's like you really gotta you gotta really dance to keep them so i was i made sure it was tight you know each show is about an hour 50 what an hour 50, 50 minutes or an hour but uh but we tightened it to 45 so when you when you do those zooms or like a YouTube live or something, you, you can have a counter of how many people. How many people would you say were watching this thing uh, uh, when it was live? When you were actually it was going quite a few. It was probably about fifty the first show and about 35, 40 the second show. Was yeah. a, for a Zoom show, that's a big crowd. No, that's yeah, it's huge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I think you know as we you know it looks like we're gonna be continuing this for a while longer this kind of lifestyle yeah um and, and i think it's here to stay to some degree i think uh, um you know like shows like what i'm doing it's just way easier well, for me to like talk to people yeah it's a silver lining for for a lot of kind of you know this kind of thing for sure you know it's like right. you, can get, you can get bigger guests because they don't have to like come to a studio you can just like you know it's really nothing they can just zoom in and yeah, like can. talk to you and stuff so it is good for a lot of things and like I said, it was, you know, it's, it was good for me to write material and stuff. So it's like, you can find the silver lining. It's just, yeah. you know. And as far as I know, this is the, uh, probably the, the first Zoom comedy album, or if not the first album, Zoom album in general. Yeah, there's, um, I, there was another comic that did something similar, but what he did was uh, he streamed into a club. Like he was on Zoom and the entire crowd was in the club, which is a little different. Mine was like, People were logged in from Brazil, Texas, California, all over the world. So it was like, you know, that was it was a my it was a traditional Zoom. It wasn't me just kind of like zooming into one place. So. Right. Yeah. I, I I think what you did is more of what I, I think people would would want in a way, especially to kind of um, what's the word like, you know, put a stamp on this on, on what this time period is. Yeah. And it, it is cool that, that that is one thing about Zoom is sometimes you'll be on a Zoom show and you'd be like, you're in Indonesia. What are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, a lot of times there'll be people. It's like, which we would never have that, you know? And so it's, it's it, that's the, that's the beauty of it. Things like that. Or you can kind of like, Oh, that's really cool. Somebody's from another country or whatever, you know? Exactly. So, so you said that this, the uh, album uh, serious is playing it. Yes. Uh, Raw dog. On, on, yeah. on Raw Dog, so people tune into that on, on uh, Sirius. And uh, where can people get the album? And, uh, um, yeah, you could buy the album um, on Amazon Music and iTunes. Um, if you're, you know, a broke comic or whatever, you can go to Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff. Yeah, it's it, it's awesome what you're doing, man. I, I think this is great. I think you're breaking ground here. Um, you know, the, the, probably like I know you said there was the other guy, but I think this is the first zoom comedy album 
<laughs> ever. I'll tell you, I'm the first yeah. real. I did it right. Yeah, I, no, I didn't cheat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is like legit Zoom album. Legit Zoom album. Yeah. Yes, Dustin Chafin has done it, folks, and uh, can go out and get it. It's uh, the Zoom album 2020. Um, Great artwork too, by the way, behind you. Like, oh, I, thanks. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I between me and a uh, um, my headshot girl, um, Angela Saki. She, uh, we worked on this together. I really wanted a look of, you know, a still life of what it is when you're on a Zoom, and it's <laughs> it's always you know junk food and you know it's your computer and your soda and stuff. So it's like I wanted it to look like you know a still life of a Zoom comedy show. That's what I was going for. So. Excellent, man. Well, uh, let everybody know where they can find you and um, and yeah, follow uh, you and all that good stuff. Too. Sure. Uh, you know, you can uh, check me out on um, Instagram, Twitter at Dustin. Uh, what is it? Underscore Chapin. One F and Chapin. And I have actually have a Zoom show coming up. Uh, it's going to be on Twitch TV. Um, it's on Comedy Hub uh, Zoom show on February 12th on Friday, uh, 9 p.m. You can go to Ventbrite or you can just hit me on one of the social media platforms. I'll give you the link. It's no cover. I'm kind of working out a new hour and kind of playing around with some going to be some big comics on the show. We're going to have a good time, but uh, check that out. So, uh, but yeah, but buy the album. I'm really proud of it. And thank you so much for helping me plug it. And uh, yeah, it's like, you know, as comics, I would just say we got to stay creative. It's the only way we're going to stay sane. You got to like try weird stuff. And so, you know, this kind of worked out. So <laughs> exactly. Like I always say, like, imagine if this pandemic happened in the seventies when, <laughs> or the eighties or something, when there was, we didn't have this oh. technology. <laughs> oh, how weird. I mean, God, we'd probably read or something weird like that. <laughs> I know. <Go> <laughs> probably read books. Oh my God. You imagine that? What are you going to binge a book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd, <laughs> we'd all be uh, flooding the libraries or something. <laughs> <laughs> breaking into libraries you need those books yeah i <laughs> uh, appreciate you man thanks again and you're welcome anytime on the show yeah uh, this is fun yeah, man. man absolutely yeah definitely right, you, you rock my friend take Thank care you. appreciate it yay, yay.